Uh, uh, oh, there was one thing I wanted now that I think about it. Sure. Um, we stripped Warwin Axe of his equipment, but not like his clothing. All Did he had was a quarter staff. Magical? No, okay. a quarter staff's not magical. It's nicer right, than well, yours, but enough. it's not magical. That's fine. Um, and then, oh, I also, I can cast uh, False Life now at will. Okay. So every hour I cast it until I get the four. I just keep rolling. When I'm not in, <laughs> not in any hurry, I'll just keep casting it until I hit a d4 on a four. Okay, False Life does... 1d4 plus 4 temp HP. Okay. So I yeah. basically always have 8. That's until fine. Until I get into combat. Cool. Just go ahead and notate that on the character sheet. Just go ahead and throw in whatever hit points you have on there. Um, as the men are prepping the longboat to go ashore, first of all, who's going ashore? I'll go. Fred volunteers. I'm going. Fred says he's... I'd love to go and meet some island women in grass skirts. Are we taking Warnax with us? Because we no, mentioned... not not yet. Um, I think one I, of us. I think one of us should yeah, think, stay back. I think at this point we're things. here's where we're bringing. Uh, I'm leaving Balin in behind in charge of the ship. Okay. Actually, I'm leaving Balin behind and Arwen's in charge of the ship, and we're bringing one sailor to help us row and navigate. Arvin declines. And then it's us. Oh, Arvin, Arvin is here. To be he's, in he's here to serve the ship, not to lead it. Okay. Is there a man you would? If I put Balin in charge, would that work? Awesome. Arvin scoffs. At, Arvin scoffs at the idea, but Balin is overjoyed. Maybe put the navigator in charge. No, he, again, Ryler is here to serve worse. the ship. He, oh, okay. He's he's a known coward. <laughs> um, Arvin hands you a list, though. Okay. It is sketchings of common herbs and plants and things he thinks you might come across while you're in the jungle, and he says if you, we used up most of the medicine stores that we had. He glances at Adric. During the mutiny, but if you find these herbs on the island, bring them back. I may be able to restock the supply. I'll take that list because I've got an herbalism kit proficiency. Okay. Is there an herbalism kit on the ship? Oh yes, Arvin has one. Okay. Yeah, in the uh, in the surgery, he has one. The rules for that, Nick, in case you're curious, it takes I think a D4 days, and you have to spend 25 gold in materials to use your herbalism kit to craft one healing potion. I don't actually have an herbalism kit, I don't think. But you have a oh, no, I do. I do. I do yeah. have a kit. Okay. Yeah, I was going um, to should, should we take that should we take that last healing potion with us? That, that's up to you. I think we should. Who has it? The the greater one I gave back to what's his face? Yeah, yeah Arvin has that one. Take, take that with us. Are you asking for it? Yeah, I'll say just in case we get into any trouble out there. He nods and he hands Hopefully it to Hopefully we'll you. be able to make more. Okay. I'll hand it to Adric. <laughs> no. okay. That Orvin scoffs again, but he says nothing. <laughs> I, I, will, I will again say, maybe we should leave someone back here just in case somebody tries something. Are you volunteering to stay behind? Maybe we should leave what's his name here? <laughs> what's his name doesn't exist. Fred? Oh, I don't know who you're talking about. Because, I mean, the story of the session takes place on this island, McDowell, so if you want to stay back with the ship, <laughs> that's fine, but you're not going to get to do very much. Well, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I, I'm fully expecting is there a, a, uh, another mutiny to happen. And, is and there a particular us, uh, crewman who us. I feel has been particularly loyal? Other than Balin? Are you thinking about everyone of the crew with you? No, putting him in charge. Putting him in charge? Um, that would be a very strange decision. If, any, okay. if anybody would be in charge left behind, it would be Balin, because he was one of the Marines. Yeah, okay. That, then, yeah, I'm going to leave Balin in charge. Okay. And he says he'll keep things in order for you. So who all and is going one... in the longboat? I think all three of us, and did we say we were bringing Fred? Fred and one crewman. Okay. Yeah. Well, the crewman, that's a no-brainer. I mean, you would default to Swent, I would think. Oh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. All right. So we've got Fred on the table. Let me go ahead and spawn in Swent. I forget what color I made Swent. Green. He was green. He's green. He was green. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. So Swent's going with you. Swent does the majority of the rowing uh, when you come to the island. There's nowhere to bring the ship right up to shore because the whole island is surrounded by rocks and reef. But the longboat oh, you're lovely. able to navigate in. 
And that looks something like this. I have to go to Imager real quick. God, I hate Imager. <laughs> Why anything ever? Let's see here. Um, did that see? Did putting on the gloves? Did that adjust my scores for certain things? Uh, all your strength yes, checks. If you just put the 19 in strength, and then on somewhere else in the sheet, write something else. The sheet will yeah. take care of it. No, I put it on notes. Yeah, I put I put my normal strength on, under my notes block. Okay. Hey, we're all exactly at the shore. <laughs> Did it really run it work out that way? I was I was tabbed out. Hey, rock on. Yeah, you made it to shore. I should probably Sweet. give Fred a weapon and some armor real quick. Uh, he can. <laughs> Fred can use your longsword. That's true. We do have that plus longsword. Yeah, we do have that plus one longsword that none of us can use. <laughs> You're giving. I mean, he's 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 glad to have it. The captain's own sword. He takes a couple of practice swings. Yeah, yeah. I'll just just don't give it back to me before we get to the ship. Obviously. Oh well, he. Seems a little down about that, but <laughs> I think my dog is barking outside. But I'm gonna record his weapon first, which I should have already done. But Edgar's weapon? Yes, Edgar's it's weapon. Edgar's weapon. <laughs> it's a chainsaw. Right. Everyone knows that. Edgar has a chainsaw. How did he manage that? Steam power. Final Fantasy gotcha. reference. <laughs> Edgar's got a, a, this really nasty uh, breath weapon of his own. It does sonic damage. Why am I typing on the wrong keyboard? That's stupid. Did you, you pulled a stupid brick? <laughs> but a longsword is not a finesse weapon. No. Oh, yeah, if he needs a strength, if he needs a dex weapon, he should just take a rapier, I guess. No, he's, uh, you will he would, he would much rather use the uh, the captain's longsword if you offer it to him. <laughs> oh, at the end of the session, at the end of thirteen two last night, we were making like a Yule who the, like the dialogue was a Yule who was something or other, a Yule was something something. And then I was like a Yule who picked her nose, a Yule who didn't wipe properly, and then the chat just went nuts. It was it was pretty good. But in addition to the longsword you offer him, he selects a hand crossbow from from the barracks. So he has hey, Hoggy Doos costume. just followed everybody. Say thanks, Hoggy Doos. Are you looking at the chat? No, I was looking. <laughs> I have the Twitch alerts up. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna run out there for 30 seconds so I can let my dog in. Now that Fred has weapons. And we come back. Go ahead and place your markers wherever you're going to be on shore. The boat landed probably back here, actually. Oh, okay. Because it's further away from these rocks. And I will return shortly. Go, Fred. Go, Swint. I'm still wearing the blue the blue ring that we have no idea what it does. Yep. Sure, we'll find out in due time. <laughs> now that anything happens, he's gonna be like, "Does the blue ring ring do anything? Does blue ring do anything?" <laughs> the blue ring right blue now ring is just sitting on your finger, doing not much of anything. Yep. So you pull your longboard. Longboard. Oh my god. Longboard? Uh, yes, I, that, that's what I decided the longboat was named. <laughs> its name is Longboard. Longboard? We're, we're going to stock uh, Longboard Here, the license longboard plates in the trophy. gift shop. <laughs> Here, the Longboard have a trophy. Okay, so Taryn, you're taking point coming yep. off the boat. Yes. That's a mistake. All right. Seems good. I'm the guy with the temp HP, so... I can delete this rug of smothering now. We don't need that anymore. Okay. So coming up onto the beach. Uh, is this your first time on a tropical desert island by any chance? Probably. Okay. It's fine, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I'm a city dude. Orphan, you have the list in hand of the herbs you need to find. Yep, you can you can see how I'm facing this brush to see if I can see anything. <laughs> Uh, not yet, but you start advancing into the jungle, and it looks, it's very, very thick, and none of you have any experience navigating through the jungle, but you approach it, and you get up to about here, mm -hmm. 
So Taryn will be in this space. And everyone else, arrange yourself accordingly. You're doing a Fred. <laughs> He's what mad at dick. you for some reason. <laughs> you get this far and you hear a peal of sound above you. It's a bird shrieking. And when you look up, you see you're being circled over by oh boy. four very large black birds. And from somewhere beyond the tree line you're hearing a very haunting melody being played. Oh boy. Perhaps on a lute or some other, or a flute or some other woodwind instrument. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Alright. Let's go longboard. Okay, right, mine's seven. Okay. Yours is seven? Yep. What did Adrian I'm get? on a fifteen as well. Fifteen? Yep. Uh Terran's acting at twelve. Terran's acting at twelve. And what was Fred's initiative is plus three. Wow, okay. Fred beats all of you. Fred seems to look up and regard the birds curiously. But does, he's got his uh, crossbow at the ready, but he hasn't done anything yet. Adric. I got a... I've got a dart ready to toss up there in case they start coming at us. Okay, let me go ahead and spawn in some birds here. I wonder if I even have any birds. I don't think so. Do you have any Captain Falcons? Yeah. Do you, oh, do you have any... Not safe in the Fal chests. Do you have any Falcons? Oh. Falcos? <laughs> we're gonna, we're, these rats are birds. <laughs> birds are just the air. Rats the air. <laughs> B-O-U-S. Birds of unusual size. Exactly. I don't believe they exist. Most of them are just swooping around over your heads. So I'm going to put them over here to... To uh, indicate that right now they're in the sky. So, you're just way too <laughs> tall, Orphan. I'm sorry to say. That's twice now. Are you marking that off on your hit points? <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> Alright, so, Adric, you're running in action and you're going to throw a dart if one of the birds comes down in range? Yeah. Okay, that, that's what happens next. So why don't you go ahead and make it to hit roll with the dart. Let's go darting games. Dart that on hits. 14, yeah, so... Dart is how much damage again? Dart is... 5 yes. is D4. Yeah. Yeah. D4 plus 3, same as my unarmed. Uh, 6 damage. 6 damage? Yep. You rear back, and you throw one of your... Uh, darts at one of these birds and you hit it mm -hmm. but it doesn't drop out of the sky okay the dart seems to eclipse its body and it you see it real for a second but then it catches itself on its wings and it starts to dive down at you incoming and your AC is 16 which that hits okay Four. Three damage. Three damage? So the okay. first one swoops right down at your head. Ow. The second one swoops down at you as well. But you... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we, we have we have to... Uh... I have to now I have to spend half my movement to get up from prone. Get back up. Yeah. <laughs> this is hard to do. Did you shrink down? Did you shrink down, Sheik? 
Oh. <laughs> there. That'll be better. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, but one of the birds has swooped down at you, and you're anticipating the second one. Do I get do I get bonuses if I attack it with a clothes hanger? A clothes hanger? Bonus points for anyone who gets that reference. I, I don't get it. Bird damage. Third one absolutely hits you. They're all they're all on me. Yeah, you lose. You threw a dart at them. <laughs> <laughs> they also get a bonus to, or an advantage on attack rolls against you if one of them was in is within five feet. Mm. Second one is five Lovely. damage. Okay. Good thing I gained a level. And the last one rolled terribly. Super. So, in quick succession, the lot of you see these four birds after one of them is grazed by a dart. These huge birds with giant wingspans. They look like hawks, except their eyes and their beaks are blood red. And... They all four swoop down at Adric. And he tries to dodge the best he can, but they're just too fast. And two of them manage to uh, get them with their sharp beaks. And all four of them then swoop back up into the sky. And are circling overhead. I did not get anybody over that time. Wonderful. Terran, what what's up? <laughs> Wait, so they go back into the sky after that? Yeah, they have 60 uh, fly speed. They can okay. swoop in and attack and then move back to the sky. Uh, I'm going to aim an Eldritch Blast. It's actually... Yeah, I'll move to here. And I will aim an Eldritch Blast at the one that was already hit. Okay, go ahead and roll. That'll do it. It's, uh... Five, yeah. How much damage? 21 for five damage. For five Force. damage. And you reach back and you throw your glowing starlight blast into the sky and you just take this bird out and he falls back down to the beach just in a cloud of feathers. And after I do that, I will move away from the rest of the party and say, uh, give me a little bit of space here, guys. I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're moving towards the tree line. Yeah. Okay. Orphan. All right. Uh, I'm going to follow him to the tree line because I ain't got no ranged attacks. Okay. And I think that bridling these birds is a pretty stupid idea anyway. Okay. okay. Swint has Too the same close, idea. Too close, Swint. I'm going to tell Swint. Too close. Give me some space. Okay, then he'll move here. Yeah, that's good. And after you get Swent positioned where you want him, as soon as he moves away from you, you see him grab his neck in pain, and he winces, and when he pulls his hand away, you see a dart sticking out of it. Oh, boy. Can everybody hear the dice in the microphone? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to zoom out like that, though. Sorry about that. That was my bad. That hits, that misses, that misses. Terran, you take three damage. Alright, down to uh, 5 temp HP. As this spear comes whistling out of the tree line, crashes into your shoulder, then tatters, uh, clatters to the ground. Two more spears come whistling out as well. One aiming for Swent, one aiming for Orphan, but neither of them hit their mark. And after that happens, the position of... Did I not get anybody over, or was that a hand going flying? That was a hand. Okay, good. I'm going to aim for yeah. you this time. No, I'm over your head. You're, you're short enough. <laughs> Looking over. Three island natives... Uh, humans with bronzed skin, just savagely dressed in animal furs. Um, and each of them have a spear in their remaining hand. 
They appear from the tree line. And from somewhere beyond them, you hear the haunting melody continuing to play. And we're back around to Fred. Now, you called out that you had a plan, right, Taryn? Yeah. Okay, so Fred busts out his loot. And he starts to play a song about uh, vicious man-eating birds. And how the great heroes shall overcome this trial. Um, so you have a D6 Bardic Inspiration die. You can add any attack roll, save, or ability score this, this round. Okay. But it's Adric's turn. He gets to go first. All right. I'm trying to think even if I'm going to be able to get over there with my monk speed. We're, yeah, we're kind of each square is five, and you can move, what, 30? 35 now. 35? Yeah. So, yeah, you can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and you're there. And this, this I already saw this guy throw a spear at my buddy. All three of them threw spears. Only one of them oh, hit. Yeah, okay. yeah. You don't know you right. don't know which one threw the one that hit, but all three of them threw spears. Did they all throw all three of them through spears? Then that's all I need to know. Deck! All right. Go ahead and deck his halls, <laughs> why don't you? Just going to clothesline him as I'm, as I'm running at his face. Uh, not with that. Not, no. not with a not with a two. Well, I, but never to add in that plus four strength bonus, but it's still only a six. So that's not good enough. Yeah, you're good. Uh, you're not bonus, that good. Bonus attack. Since I didn't close line him properly. Uh, let's see. So since I switched over to strength, I gotta I gotta I gotta fix my mental math. Their AC is ten. They're not wearing any armor. So that will that actually um, will hit. That's a nine plus four. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Okay. okay. Go ahead and roll unearned damage on that. One plus four is five. Five damage? Yep. You clobber this guy, and you hear where your fist connects with him. I'm still trying to type on the wrong keyboard here. No wonder I'm having problems. <laughs> you get him also, right in the I'm chest, and you feel something inside of his chest crack, and he reels back for a second. He doesn't go down, but you have definitely decked him one. He is not happy with his life right now. Also, I'm at uh, 10 hips. 10 hips? It's about to be less than that. Bird swoops down again. Coming down at Adric. Coming in from behind this time. Wonderful. For... 3 piercing damage. Uh, 7. I take that as a challenge. And then the other two in quick succession. First one... Then the other. The third one rolled a one, but he also has advantage on the roll, so then he rolled a 17. <laughs> See, what I'm a dickhead. I know, right? For four damage piercing total. They both rolled ones. Alright, so four piercing damage altogether, so... No, four in addition to what you took from the first bird. Ow! Yeah, you're hurting. Yeah. And again, these well, birds just so much for that swoop point. down out of the sky. You you feel that you're starting to take chunks of your flesh and beard off of your body and carry them off with them. Oh, I've I've had time to fix my beard, so I I, I got my beard did, and I'm not happy about that. Oh, my laptop just shut itself off. Oh, I know exactly why it did that too. I never. An update. No, I never pause the stream. It overheats if I watch Twitch on it. Oh. That's fun. All right, give me a second to get that back up. It is Taryn's turn. Well, that plan, I was hoping they'd go for me, so that plan didn't quite work after yeah, that Ultra you, Blast. You, you didn't do anything... You, you were not the, one of them. Yeah, but you didn't do anything threatening to the Islanders. Oh, okay. Feel free to blast one of the Islanders, though. I will move to here. Okay. And I will cast uh, Arms of Hadar, which should get all three Islanders. That will, in fact, get all three of them. So they get a. Uh, my goal was to ready this to cast when the bird swoops down. So they get a strength save. If they fail, they take 2d6 Necro. Oh, I know what if it does. They... Okay. <laughs> I, know, so, <laughs> I know exactly what it right. does. I'm a warlock, so vessel, don't forget. Of, right. So I kind of open up a void of non space within myself, and hideous tentacles lash out from me in every direction. Where are you centering it on? Uh, it has to be on myself, isn't it? No, you can center it on a... I think it's a creature you can see. Oh, really? 
Oh, I'd be centering it on this guy because then it wouldn't get. Let me look at that. I thought it was on me. If it's on you, then Vorpal was doing it wrong. <laughs> when we played last night. <laughs> I might be wrong, though. Oh, or you know what? Maybe he was using an invocation to put it at range. Alright, I've got Chrome back open here. I need to just open up. And one of the birds is dead. So yeah, I'm thinking if I'm here, I'll hit the three islanders, but not get uh, Erdurk. So does it center on you? It does center on me, yes. Okay. It's a 10-foot radius. And one of the islanders was... Yeah, so he's, he's, uh, he's positioning it so it doesn't get me. You did five damage, right, Mikkel? So he's down. Okay. Yeah, five damage. So he needs to make a strength save, and he needs to make a strength save? And I think this one too, right? Or do I have to move closer? Is I think I would be able to get them without getting Adric. What's the radius on it? Ten feet. Ten feet? He's fifteen feet yeah. away. These so two are within ten feet. Here? Yep, then you can do it. Okay. Now he's within ten feet. Um yeah, let me go ahead and make some strength saves here. And then if they can't if they fail, they can't take reactions. What's your spell save DC? Uh thirteen. Thirteen? The one that Adric punched passed, but he doesn't have a reaction to take. And it's 2d6 damage? Yep, half on a bad. Oh, God. oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, seven? Yeah, seven necrotic. And the third one saved, but he was already he's already got uh, broken ribs and things, so. You see the tentacles lash out from the void where Terran was once standing. And they lash out and they just grab and claw at these these natives. And they they look horrified. I, I'm over here looking horrified. I'm like, why did they look at me like a demon if this guy's got the tentacle from nowhere? <laughs> Right, um, and this one goes down. This one falls to the sand and stops moving. He's not stops struggling against the tentacles. Boom. The other two are still standing. Um, orphan. Right. Now anybody uh, sta who starts or ends their turn in this radius takes that damage. Oh really? Okay. Yes. Oh Let's really? See. I thought it was just instant. Arms of Hadar. Yeah. Is it possible I'm thinking of a totally different kind spell? Kind of awesome if it wasn't, but I thought that was just an instant thing. Let me double check. It might be Duration a different Hadar spell. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking yeah, of Hunger of Hadar. Yes, yes, yes. That's Hunger of Hadar. I think it's yeah. a level 3 Warlock spell. Okay. Okay. But yeah, yours is instant. Later on, you'll get a much better one. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to try to swap places with him. Yeah. If I can. If you want. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can attack any of them. Like I said, we're using the no, grid but, as a representation. Uh, yeah, but I'm I'm hoping that um, I can get uh, maybe like a, an unarmed, like I can take one out with the main and get an unarmed on the second or so, second one or something. So I want to be in range of that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go with the caracal on. Uh, let's see, what is it? This guy? Yeah, that. I don't even know how. To, ah, I'm so bad at tips option to you guys. Um, what is it? To, uh, is it shift or what? To is drop an arrow. Tab. Tab. Oh, tap, okay. Yeah. So, if this is the first one. Okay. And that's not going to hit. That's a... Oh, uh, what's your bonus? But it's a... Um... You're only trying to hit a 10. Oh, okay. Yeah, that will hit. That's an 11, then. All right, yeah, roll damage on that. Okay. Um, let's see. Right, so, that's 6... Six damage on this one? Yeah. And that was with your uh, little axe thing? Yeah. And you just cleave his skull. You bring it right down on top of him, and he crumples. Alright. And then with the unarmed blow, I'm going to attack the other guy. So that is a ten as well. Alright, roll it. And that'll do six damage. And he's crumpled as well. 
You come right upside his head and knock him flat on his ass, and he stops moving. Just the necrotic arms from beyond time and space have taken their toll. But you still hear the melody coming from somewhere beyond the tree line. And we're back to Fred. Fred, you hear Fred come rushing up at you, oh, hollering God, something about go down? hollering about Swent collapsing to the ground. And when you turn around, you see Swent has indeed fallen to the sand, and he's starting to froth at the mouth. Adrian, roll perception. Actually, everybody, roll perception. DC ten. Say. Oh, there goes my nope. die. Off the that was going to be a board. 19, then it turned into a 4. No. <laughs> I rolled my die off the table accidentally. Uh, natural 19. So I got a 5. Wait, a natural 19? Yeah. Never heard of that before. I mean, with no bonuses, it's 19 without Looking, bonuses. So. Well, it was, it was only DC 10. Look up over yeah. the tree line. Uh, you see more of these birds. In addition to the, the three that are still circling, you see more coming in your direction. Um, you count five of them have come up out of the jungle and are starting to swoop to your location. Wonderful. Meanwhile, the birds that are here come swooping down out of the sky. Thanks for taking aggro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burst damage. I'm oh not, my I'm not god, tank. I just rolled double ones on that third roll. On 2d20, I rolled double ones. <laughs> but the second one got a crit. Well, that makes up. It does. I enjoyed it. Destal, eight damage. Eight. So I take three after I run out of temp HP. Yep. And was that, that was in your armor of Agathis, was it? No, that was my... I wish. Yeah. I traded that out. Um, as soon as you pull the magic tendrils back into your body and they disappear, and you see, watch the island natives on the ground crumpling, you hear Fred shouting from behind, and as you turn around, just a flurry of black feathers is upon you, and one of them takes a bite out of your ear, and all three of them swoop mm. back up in the sky. Ouch. And yeah, your ten yeah, HP so you, is you, you gone. Yeah, so you traded that spell out, you know, after the after the uh, after the P armor, it's kind of like never again, <laughs> right? Well, it's just I have a class feature that's a little bit more efficient about the temp HP. I'm like, how often am I going to take three hits that do less that do enough damage that I actually get to trigger it more than once, right? <laughs> you take the three off my let's see here, so I'd be at thirteen or twelve. And we are around to Terran. Um, uh, I'm going to recast False wait, Life. Does that, does that do wait. Anything? Oh, did I skip well, Adric? And Fred. Yeah, well, Fred said, hey, this guy's, oh, this guy's just, frothing yeah. at the mouth. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Adric. I did skip Adric. Yeah. You, did, you, should, you, you did. should have spoke up. I should have, but... But you didn't. All right. I'm going to look for this. I'm going to perception to find the source of this flute music. Okay. Uh, 19. Uh, make it a disadvantage, though. Because it's coming from somewhere inside the thick jungle foliage. Uh, okay, that's a 10. That's a 10? Yeah, the source of the music you think is coming from the bushes over in this direction. But you're not exactly sure where. Okay, I can't really figure it out at this point. So, I will double back and, uh, head over that way. Okay. Try and help this guy out. Taryn. I'm going to recast False Life. Okay. Seven hit points. How many? Seven temp HP. Okay. Let's go ahead and add that on. And I'll move towards the line. You... Uh, the character sheet doesn't really handle temp HP very well. Like, Just add it on top of your max. Right or okay. on top of your current HP. Well, no, I guess that wouldn't work either. Yeah. I'll just, I have it written down. You just notate it somewhere. It's yeah. fine. It's going to go away after a rest anyway. I need to open up the character sheets again, though. Well, I'll just keep recasting it. But... I'm still recovering from my laptop. Oh, so you had the character sheets on the laptop? Oh, yeah, of course. But I had yeah. Twitch open on the laptop, too. I had the stream preview. And I usually pause it so it's not actually running. Mm. But today I did not. 
today I let it run, and if that happens, my laptop overheats because it's an old computer and it's a piece of crap. Old butt computer. Old butt computer. That's not, not that old. Maybe four years. It's not too terribly old. Um, but the only person who knows, who has deduced where the actual music is coming from in the jungle, would be Adric. He made a he made an active perception looking right. for it. Yeah, yeah. it's moving in the direction. Did you say that that's where it's coming from, or? No, actually, I didn't. He didn't. Oh. Well, then, I guess I'll just move towards an area that's isolated, so hopefully the birds keep coming after me, and I keep casting the spell, and... Running for cover? <laughs> <laughs> He's taking damage. Orphan. Alright, I'm gonna run into the tree line, and okay. try to try to hide. Is, is the cover thick enough there to hide? Oh, yeah, real stealth. Okay. Let's see. What is my stealth? Alright. Great, ten. You know what? I'm gonna open the Twitch preview on my desktop so as not to make that same mistake. There we go. How'd you do? I rolled a 10. A 10? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you dive into a position where you think you are hidden. Okay. Um, Adric. What's up? Since you're focusing on finding the source of the music, you hear shuffling and from beyond the tree line, out beyond where Terran has moved. It sounds like it's receding from you. Okay. So I think they're fleeing. They're back around to Fred. Uh, Fred is trying to tend to Swin. He's like trying to shake him to the shoulder. Hey man, what's going on? Wake up! Be better! <laughs> Adric. Somehow I don't think it's going to work. Um... Uh... Let's see here. Go to see if there's any antitoxin in that cabinet. Uh, Adric uh, did find antitoxin in the cabin, but he gave it back to Arvin. I did. Oh, right. Get out of the um, cat. Medicine check, untrained, to see figure what the hell is going on with him. Uh, 19. 19? He has a poison dark in the neck. Oh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry, Swint, man. I, I, I feel bad. I really do. There, I don't know whether if I'm going to be able to do anything for you. Man's been poisoned. He has indeed. Okay. Adric. You take five points of damage. Uh, that that would drop me. You're down? Yep. And Fred takes some damage. What are, what are we taking damage Holy from? Holy Christ, you'll see in a second. Fred took a lot of damage. He's still level 1, by the way. Poor Fred. <laughs> Orphan, you're working your way to the tree line, and you see Adric and Fred trying to uh, tend to Swent. And as they do, the three birds circling overhead ah. come back down. <laughs> what a bunch of dicks! One of them swoops down at Adric, and Adric goes up to block with his arms, but this bird just right across his face, puts a big gash in the side, and he falls to the ground. One of them doesn't hit anything, and the third one takes a big chunk out of Fred's shoulder, and you hear him cry out, PAIN! THIS IS WHAT PAIN FEELS LIKE! <laughs> and the birds swoop back into the sky. Adric's gotta start making death saves! Terran. Uh, I'll yell to Fred, hey, he's got a healing potion in his pouch. And do, then, do you um, indicate who has the healing potion, or just say he has I'm one? I'm pointing at Adric. Pointing at Adric? And then I'll Eldritch Blast a bird. Adric, does he actually know you have that healing potion? Yeah. I was the one who told him to take it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Was that the healing potion or the greater healing potion? The greater. The greater one. Okay. Uh, that hits an armor class of, I think that's plus five, so 23 for seven force damage. Okay. And you blast one of these hawks out of the sky, but just as you do so... You see another flock of them coming in from the north. They're joined by five more. Every uh, time he fires that Eldritch Blast, I, I can't help but hear the uh, the Star Trek phaser noise in my in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I keep pushing the space bar on the wrong keyboard, and I'm looking like an idiot. It's hilarious. Holy crap. I just rolled max <clears throat> HP for that bird. 
That was amazing. Amaze balls. I think it's pretty amaze balls how quickly you died in this fight. Oh uh, yeah, but you so you reach back, you blast one out of the sky, and it falls to the ground dead. But it quickly the birds are joined by another flock. The music is still coming from the foliage. So there are six of them now. Orphan. Alright, I'm going to roll a perception check to see if I can figure out where the music is coming from. Do it. From my hidden my hidden spot. God F it. <laughs> If the music seems to be coming from all directions killed. at once. There's there's certainly some kind of enchantment on this tune. But all right. because you're standing past the tree line, you see movement far off to your right. It would be... I probably should have included some of the jungle in this map, but I couldn't find anything that had jungle on it, too. It would be coming from over this direction, and it seems to be headed your way very quickly. Okay. Just, you hear, like, branches cracking and uh, foliage ruffling. There's definitely movement coming towards you. Okay. And Swent, he's going to roll to lay there on the ground. Sweet. Red. Or question marks. Yeah, Fred was at the top of the order. I'm saying, what do you mean, Fred? Orphan, from where you're standing. <laughs> you see spears go whistling past you. From the direction of the, the direction of the uh, sound that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. and three more spears. They go flying deeper into the jungle, and you hear one of the spears connect with something, and you hear a cry. A man cries out in pain. And the music stops. All right. Can and I can I kind of? You can't do anything until your next turn. No, I know, but like. Just like, can I try, try triangle like, like where that sound came from? On your next turn, yes. Okay. Fred roots around in Adric's pouch, mm -hmm. finds the healing potion, and drinks it. Yeah. What a dick! <laughs> uh, isn't that what? Isn't that what Terran meant? I thought that's what Terran meant. <laughs> I I totally saw this coming. <laughs> I did too. I did too. And yeah. I, was, and I, and I, and I couldn't I couldn't say anything because I'm down. So. Yeah. Um, would, would punch you in the balls one of these days. I, Fre like Fred is good aligned, but he's also self interested. So yeah, he he drinks his greater healing potion, and he looks very much renewed. <laughs> Adrian, make, right. make it that safe. Fred is uh, Fred is really endearing himself to me. <laughs> Just so you know, I can talk during other people's turns, right? Yes. Yeah. God Failed. damn it, Fred! <laughs> That's a failure. Failure? Okay, mark a failure down. Birds. Uh, the birds disperse. Terran, after the music okay. stops, the birds, which were swooping overhead with great intent, uh, lose their focus, and they kind of flock northward back into the jungle. Um, Untrained healing check to stabilize? Is sure. that a 10? Wisdom, right? Yes, straight DC 10. No. Now, he doesn't get any no. worse. I know. <laughs> uh, orphan. Alright, uh, I'm going toward the sound that I heard. Like, okay. the, the man's cry. It's over I in this course. direction somewhere. Like, up by where this purple... Which we end up not needing this purple thing, so I can get rid of that. Alright. So I, I approach where I heard the cry. Okay. Oh, where the cry? No, the, yeah, cry, would, the, cry. the cry would be over here. Alright, so I approach there. And when you get there, there is a dead islander laying on the ground with a spear in his chest. And on the ground next to him is a crude uh, reed flute. Alright, I'm going to take that flute. It's yours. Alright. Um, that wasn't much of my movement, right? Um, it would, it, well, we're going to say it is just because the jungle counts as difficult terrain. Okay. So yeah, that took your full turn to get over there, find the body, search it, and find that flute. Okay. You realize I have unarmed movement though, right? You have what? Unarmed movement. So my speed's 40 right now. Your speed's 40? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fine. I'm still going to say that that was your whole turn. Okay. Because I mean, you, right. you moved through the brush, you yeah. found the man, you looked around at his body, you found a flute, you picked it up, you put it in your pouch. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Swent is very much still unconscious. 
At this, some figures come out of the jungle from a different direction than the original ones did. They're bearing spears. They too are they're dressed savagely in furs, but they're not first of all, they're not dressed with the same kinds of animal fur. Um it's brown where the others were orange with stripes. But again, uh, bronze skin, all three of them are men, all three of them are bald, and they're all holding spears, but they're not holding them threateningly aggressively. And they just move out of the jungle and begin to regard the group on the beach. Fred, can you try and stop the bleeding here? Fred turns his attention to uh, Adric. Uh, mark a success, Adric. Actually, you know, just go ahead and stabilize yourself. We don't need to go through all this. Okay. So, one? Yeah, he, a healing check stabilizes. It doesn't add a success. So, one hit point? No, you don't get any hit points. You're just stabilized. Okay. You're, you're just no longer dying. All right. Uh, Taryn, it's your turn. Um, well, I'll ask him, do you speak common? What do you, that's all you say? Do you speak common? Yeah, well, that's the first thing I say. Okay. This one, the man who approached closest to you from the jungle, puts his spear, the uh, butt of it in the sand, and says very gruffly, Yes. And he's regarding you with curiosity more than anything. Uh, orphan, this will be... Are you going to do anything aggressive or hostile on this turn? Uh, no, I'm going to move back to the tree line and... Or to, or to the edge of it. And when I see these guys, I'm going to try to hide again. Okay, go ahead and roll it. So, yeah. I mean, their, their passive perception is a butt, so it won't be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. So... That'll do it. You actually, you actually vanish inside of a tree... Like, you're, like, up inside of a dryad's vagina right now. <laughs> Just <laughs> swallowed whole. That is disgusting. So, yeah, the leader of these men says, yes. Uh, my name's Terran. I come from that ship out there. Okay. What's your name? They look out and regard the ship. And they look like they've seen a ship before. They look like uh, they're curious about it. So you ask him his name, and he turns back to you, looks down at the ground at sweat, says, you must remove that dart immediately. I'll do so. Okay. Sweat is looking really, really bad. Where the dart hit him in the neck, the skin has started to putrefy already. And you see blackness spreading out from it, from the wound. Uh, his eyes are rolling back. His tongue is lolling in his mouth. He's looking really bad. But you pull out this dart from his neck. And at least it's no longer stuck there. And as you do, the other two islanders move in on him. I'll get out of their way. They seem to know more what they're doing than I do. Get out of the way? Okay. This one is barking orders at them uh, in a language none of you ever heard. It sounds very throaty. It comes from very deep in the lungs, more so than on their tongue. And, yeah, these two islanders get Swent up under the arms and start dragging him back into the jungle. Well, I suppose we'll be coming with you, assuming you don't mind. And he nods once, and he turns and starts to follow his comrades. And poor Adric just left out there on the beach to get eaten by birds. <laughs> no, Fred stoops yeah, down. I mean, he can't carry you by by himself, but he's going to get under one of your shoulders. I'll take Adric's gloves off, and then I can carry him easily. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll make it a lot easier to carry him. So you put on Adric's good gloves. You good idea. Ho hoist them up over your head, spin them around like a baton. <laughs> and you march off with and the men into the jungle. When I Carry, see they're no, they're no threat, I'll, I'll come out too. Okay. Well, you don't know that they're no threat. You just know that they haven't tried to kill anybody yet. Yeah, that's true. And they march with some speed, considering that you're carrying two unconscious men through the jungle. I don't have a map of this next area, so you're just going to have to imagine it in your heads. 
I didn't get a map of it because I was not expecting there to be any combat there. And since McDole is unconscious, I don't expect there will be. <laughs> <laughs> the only combat right now that's going to be is going when I realize that my healing potion is gone and I'm just... <laughs> What are you doing? I, I am I am arrowing Fred. <laughs> arrowing Fred? No, he's coming with you. He's saving your butt. We march through the jungle for about an hour. March inland. And the jungle starts to thin out. And before long, you come into a clearing. A, a grassy area uh, that has been surrounded by rocks to form a perimeter. Large enough to contain this small this uh, small village, with just very crude grass huts, um, a very large fire pit in the center of the village. Um, there's probably you would estimate thirty people here, all humans, all dressed similarly to the island men, and they're carrying to the largest hut at the far end of the city. And they bid you to follow. How long were we walking? It was a couple of hours. Uh, we, are they going to be any more conversive along the way, or do what do you say to them? Strike up a conversation with them. They're not in the mood to talk. They, they. Okay. You get the sense that they don't speak common very well. I mean, I could always. <laughs> you speak with them telepathically. Yeah. Which one? Uh, the one who spoke common. I'll ask. Is this an, an easier way to speak? He looks spooked when you do that. His eyes get very wide when he looks at you, like he, like you're doing something invasive. Why do people always think that? <laughs> Telepathy, dude. It's crazy. Get used to it. And whenever you do, he he says something in his native language, and then he holds his hand, or he he clenches a really tight fist and holds it across his heart, and then he turns back to continue walking. That's his response anytime you try to. Communicate with him tele telepathically. Well, I'll apologize in common in that case. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it uh, might be a little easier than common. Like, putting words into people's brains when they don't know what's going on. <laughs> so you get to the hut, and they bring Swent in. Does everybody enter the hut? It's big enough to accommodate yeah. all of you. I just need to know who's going to go in. Yeah, I have no, I have no, uh, I have no say in the matter. No, but you'll get a short rest pretty quick here, so don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> Inside the hut is all manner of just strange... It, it, an old voodoo lady lives here, essentially. <laughs> the woman in the hut... And all the people here are totally bald. They have their, their heads are completely shaved. And this an old woman in the hut. Probably the oldest human mortal you've ever seen in your life. And she's got on... Fur, a, a fur robe made of some kind of animal native to this island. Her skin is saggy and wrinkly. One of her eyes is milked and glassed over. And she's pouring over this large cauldron in the center of the room, uh, which is made of iron. And it's the first metal that you've seen since you've arrived. And she's stirring something in this giant cauldron enchanting something in what you've come to recognize as the island's native language. When she sees the man brings sees the men bring Swent in, she moves over to them, shoes them out of the way, and starts moving her hands over his body. She starts rocking back and forth, singing something in that same language. This goes on for about two or three minutes, where she very abruptly snaps her head up and points at Terran. She says, in very clear common, you, you brought him here. Yes, I did. Why did you do this? We've been uh, at sea for some number of weeks, and we were looking for somewhere to resupply. The island is the first uh, land we'd seen. She stands up, and she starts coming towards you, and she starts making shooing motions with her hands. She says, there is nothing you can do for him. Go, go away, back to your ship. What do you mean there's nothing we can do for him? What's happened to him? She says a few phrases in her native tongue. 
Sounds like she's cursing at you. And I actually have to look at my note here. It's a poison. A poison of the Dumisa. He's dead. Forget him. Move on. Go away. Are, are the Dumisa the people who attacked us when we came? You ask her that? Yeah. The, uh, the tribesmen who, who initially Terran spoke to answers your question. Dumisa is a tribe, other side of island, far side of jungle. Very aggressive. They have poisons. They have magics. Well, I mean, we're not strangers to magic either. Is there any sort of antidote? Any sort of magical ritual or anything? I'm yes. gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll show her the, the list that um, Arvin gave me. Would any of these plants help him? She snatches the list from your hand and starts tearing at it. She says, Nothing for you here. Go away. Back to your ship. She turns, <laughs> moves Great. back to her cauldron. The tribesman seems to be saddened by her antics. He does not seem to uh, understand what she's doing. All right, so I'm going to make a persuasion check here. Okay. I'm going to be like, look, please, I realize we might be strangers in your land, but even if you don't have to help us, if you can just tell us if there is a way to help us, we can, you know, we'll be out of your way. We're not meaning you any harm. We simply want to help our friends. Okay. My persuasion check is a <laughs> seven. No, eight. An eight? Oh, no, it's uh, it's ten. It's a ten. Ten? 